She's already laughing because she knows the joke. Hello, welcome to Homeschool Together. I promised my haircut. And we got a new sponsor, Aerial Clips. <laughs> so stupid. When you need your haircut during the pandemic and you don't care about the outcome. I did a good job. Don't you think I did a good job, guys? Tell them Homeschool Together sent you for 20% off. <laughs> All jokes aside, this week we were in Ecuador and the Galapagos. It was a shorter week. And Uruguay and Paraguay, and, Paraguay. and a little bit of Bolivia. A little bit of Bolivia. <laughs> Those are three countries that were not covered yeah. in the curriculum. This would have been a torchlight week if you're following with our Build Your mm -hmm. Library torchlight theme. It was just supposed to cover Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands, but we felt like what about Uruguay, Paraguay, and Bolivia. So we had to we at least them. talk about them. <laughs> yes. So um, we did cover those in small detail in a couple of books and videos. As always, if, you, if you're interested in our South America resource guide, check down on the, the details below. Because we don't video. skip any countries. We don't. We don't <laughs> skip any countries. But this week, we, as always, we like to focus on typically two things during mm -hmm. our study. Um, this week, we focused on the nature of Galapagos, the kind of centered around there, the geology, the environment, water, the you know the the animals, and then we also focused on turtles. So kind the of tortoises? Are they turtles or tortoises? Turtles, tortoises. They're, I'm but they're sure not the same thing. There's a biologist out there who's screaming like frogs and toads. Like there's very <laughs> different. Well, <laughs> the big Galapagos. No, I think it is. I think it is turtle, right? It's a tortoise. It might be a tortoise. Anyways, you know what we meant. It's a tortoise. Tortoise. It's a tortoise. Tortoise. So let's get into the books that we covered. So let's start right off. This is one you read, The Island, A Galapagos, a Story, Story of the Galapagos. Galapagos. So. Oh yeah, well, come on, get a Vanna for me. I am. I okay, am. well, show the people the pictures. Yeah. So this is the main Torchlight Spine. This is a book by Jason Chin. It's beautiful. One of the things that's different about this book is it actually goes through like the life cycle of the island, yeah. how it was birthed from hot magma. And uh, became, you know, started to acquire foliage and animals started to, to be there in kind of its, its middle, middle age of the island. Yeah. And then as it starts to recede and eventually goes back into the sea and, you know, then scientists come along later and there's just a, a ring left that was the rim of the caldera. And, and, and it's the really ecology cool. develops. And, and, it talks and, about the evolution yeah. of a couple of the species. It's a really great book. It's the Artworks. best book yeah. that we read about the Galapagos. And this was from the Torchlight Selection. Yeah, this is um, a book not to skip. I think this would be, also be a terrific book if you're doing a prehistory unit study on evolution. Mm -hmm. You could mm -hmm. get this book. So I would say this is a great one to add to your library. I think we're going to buy this one because it was so good. Yeah. And it covers uh, some geology, some evolution, and then this area... Uh, so, yes, Island, Story of the Galapagos, a real winner. Well, and, and a common theme that kind of arced through this since we were doing a lot of nature and a lot about the tortoises, tortoises, um, <laughs> was the idea of evolution. So it was a way for us to kind of bring that in right. for the first time. You know, a lot of glazed overlooks. What do you mean humans have but changed over our, time? Our daughter kind of after, got that. After yeah. a few videos, I showed her um, kind of arcing across the development of humans. And she, I think she started to understand. I just don't think she understood the time. It was such a long time period. She just It's hard for us yeah. even to conceptualize yeah. the time. But I think the tortoises were really good because some of the tortoises on one island got the saddleback shape so that they could reach higher and yep. eat higher food. And others that had plenty of grasslands, they maintained their other shell shape. And I think she totally got that. And by the end, But yeah. the, the span of time, it's hard for a kindergartner, let alone even an adult, to yeah. understand the full span of time. But yeah. it was a good start. It was. It was. Next one, uh, Galapagos George. So this is kind of a, um, a historical story about the last of the long-necked tortoises, but also a story about how the island developed, how the turtles evolved over time. And then the very end, kind of telling a very short story of Galapagos George, which was the last of the long neck tortoises, and it passed away, I think, in 2012. This and is a beautiful artwork. It was beautiful artwork, yeah. And that was kind of a common theme through all, uh, both of these books. It's just beautiful artwork, um, really captures the imagination, mm -hmm. really captures the you know the excitement of the the various species, and then that launched into a lot of a lot of additional learning. So yeah, really fantastic. This is also a really good one. Um, if you don't have a chance to get any of these two books from the library, Galapagos Girl was an, another great story just centered around a young yeah. girl. So if you don't get a chance, yeah. we, we wouldn't necessarily recommend if you have to get this one, get this one. But if you can't get the other two, this is a nice alternative. Good so, runner-up. Good runner-up as well. So you read this. Another, yes. Oh, you got it. Yes, the, for where me. are Where are the Galapagos? Galapagos. This is one, another one of the Who HQ books. Mm -hmm. uh, where are the Galapagos? And this is great. It's a light chapter book. It's a little bit much for a kinder, but we read through almost all of it, I think, with my daughter. And it yeah. takes through the history of the, 
the uh, discovery of the island, and then it was used by pirates for a long time, which yeah. she found very interesting. <laughs> and then it became uh, more of a geological preserve or um, a nature preserve at some point for mm -hmm. the species. And so, anyway, these are just terrific books. Yeah, the Who HQ. We have a lot of these, and we, we just keep pulling them out as we hit various areas. Yeah, this would be great if you've got an older learner that you're doing this with, who you know you might have do like a book report or something mm -hmm. on this. This is a great a great buy for for the Galapagos, and also talks a lot about evolution. There's a whole chapter in here about Darwin, and you know how he how he kind of put pieces together and, and figure it out evolution. So this would also be a good one to bring in if you're doing a prehistory unit study. Absolutely. Um, next one, this was a Paraguay selection called Ada's Violin. Um, really yes. touching story about a, a group of children centered in this kind of outside of Asuncion, I think is the capital of Paraguay. Good, good job. Yeah, and there's a landfill and there's, there's these people who lived around the landfill and actually went into the landfill to harvest you know, materials like uh, recyclables, glass, plastic, metal, things of that nature. Town was extremely poor, but there was a, a gentleman who came in who ended up becoming the music teacher who was trying to figure out a way for the, to fix the ecology of the local area. And he couldn't do it, so he ended up becoming the music teacher and then having the people go into the landfill and actually pull back materials to build, you know, um, instruments, violins, cellos, drums, things of that nature. And it talks all about the evolution of that and how the whole town got put behind these these kids playing music and they actually ended up playing in front of like large stadiums mm. with their musician with their instruments made from you know trash in, ex in essence so very touching story I got to talk a lot about poverty with my my six-year-old yeah. so it was a really really touching story and there's a little bit of a carry-on from this that we'll talk about in a minute or so mm -hmm. but a really good book this is a really good choice heavy heavy content but i think it's worth worth a while it's actually a great read Mm. Um, next one, so exploring countries. We've talked about this series of books. This before. is the blast off readers. They don't have them for every single country, yeah. but they're really perfect for this age group because they and, give just the right amount of information. And Uruguay was one of the countries that we tried to touch a little bit, so we were able to pick this up this week and read about uh, Uruguay to to my daughter. Just another way for her to get a little bit of exposure for a country that maybe would have been left off on the around the world journey. I really high, highly recommend these books. So great yeah. read. Last off readers, good. Um, ones we haven't talked about here, we'll talk a little bit as, a, as a, uh, an yeah. idea is in the Enchantment of the World and then um, I had to, it's this is the Visual, Visual Geography series. So these are two books that are really for older learners. Mm -hmm. they, they've got, the, the information is way too much for yeah. uh, kinder, but they do have some really nice pictures in them. Yeah, and great, especially, great as a look through. That's what, yeah. Yeah, and especially considering that, you know, this one's Bolivia and then Paraguay. These are not countries that we would have gotten to cover otherwise. Yeah. There aren't a lot of books. Like, there's not yeah. a lot of books about Bolivia. So this was a way that we could do this. And we actually just use these as a visual reference for our mm -hmm. daughter to kind of look through. And then if she was interested about something in one of the pictures, then we could kind of delve into that and read yeah. read about it, kind of translate it for her into something she can understand. And something we've been thinking about as we come back to this around the world journey when she's a little bit older, when her sister's doing this, these are going to be great books for her to be able to pull off the right. shelf and read because she'll be up to this reading level and so hopefully she'll be able to glean a little bit more information. So yeah. we're kind of doing research for the future, but you know we want to share these. So these are great through. if you have older learners or yeah. if you have a younger learner that you just want to get some pictures of areas you might not mm -hmm. otherwise be able to cover because there aren't a lot of books available. Perfect. All right, so then we move on to uh, movies. So keying in off of uh, Ada's violin, mm -hmm. there yeah, was this a one here. right here. Yeah, there was a documentary made about Ada and her classmates and musicians called The Landfill Harmonic, which is a documentary about that. Was this up for like one of the Best Born Film Awards or something? It's got a lot not? of the, the leaves at the top, which says it's a good movie. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but uh, the movie was basically a documentary of their kind of coming up through, um, you know, the starting of their, of their little symphony and being able to learn how to, you know, play music and building the instruments and a lot of scenes of poverty and the town, and then also mm -hmm. ultimately their triumph of being able to play in front of you know a large stadium and they kind of opened the show. Um, really difficult subject matter because you can really see the deep poverty, but it's, I thought it was very well worth the time. It is all in Spanish, so you do have mm -hmm. to read subtitles. It got a little too much, so I was actually just translating like 20% of the words that were on the, on the, on the screen. Yeah, they, they talk really quickly. Really quick, but I thought it was enough for her to kind of get the gist of what what was going on. Mm -hmm. So highly recommend this. We got this from the library. So um, the Landfill Harmonic, there's going to be a, there's a trailer. We'll make sure to include it down below right. and you can see a lot about the story. So highly yeah, recommend this. Great one. 
Um, BBC Earth, which is just amazing. Mission Galapagos. Mission Galapagos. This was really good. It was a three-part documentary mm -hmm. series where each part was about an hour about a team of scientists. And yeah. they, they tried to make it pretty exciting. <laughs> what was going to happen? You know, like yeah. maybe there was going to be peril. There was never really peril. But <laughs> they were um, going out and looking for uh, pink iguanas. And they were undersea in a submersible. And the submersible scenes were just breathtaking. They were really good. They had these so, dual submersibles that were going down. What I think you said almost a was a thousand meters they went down a thousand meters in one so, of them yeah. which was pretty amazing so they went to you know areas never before seen and stuff so i liked that it was three different ones mm -hmm. and they were all 50 minutes an hour right around there so mm -hmm. they were short enough that we could watch them and actually within each of these there's like four different little missions so mm -hmm. you could even just watch them in like 20 minute 15 to 20 yeah, minute bursts chunks. you wouldn't have to watch the whole thing at once uh, and our two-year-old really enjoyed it too so lots of great nature in this one mission galapagos mission galapagos awesome um continuing with what we always do we love food here in this household um we made tostones so, so fried fried plantains fried green plantains unbelievably good <laughs> they didn't they, last long enough to take a picture they went very <laughs> fast um super we'll make sure to include the recipe below yeah. is it tostones is the double fry uh, right so yes. yeah it's a green plantains you slice them kind of like a banana almost but uh, but a little bit different we had our girls try not them. as sweet not as sweet yeah we had them try them before we cooked them so they could kind of get an idea what they taste like and um then we uh, we fried them and then you you smush them so you can you can smush a technical term in the culinary house I think so okay. so you can you can eat them when they're just just fried before you smush but then if you smush them and then put them back in the fryer then they get all crunchy around the edges and um, we topped them with various different kinds of salt and seasonings yeah. and they were awesome they were fantastic. our girls loved them they were super easy to make so highly recommend those yeah uh continuing with our study we, we did a little bit of turtle study tortoise, uh, tortoise i'm sorry tortoise, tortoise. studies <laughs> and so uh my, my great achievement is i took pillows and i bungeed them around the girls <laughs> And I had them crawl around the house. I saw them crawling mainly, by. I was like working in the office, doing work, and I see them going by the glass door. Mainly to distract her. You know, she's in a meeting, really important with her boss, and she turns around and sees two children crawling and <laughs> acting like they're tortoises, making weird noises that tortoises don't make. But you know, it was a, it was pretty good. So turtles was a fun little thing, little activities we were able to do. Turtle. <laughs> You're just screwing this up, Lisa. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put me back out. Um, last thing we did is um, there's a fantastic uh, series of videos on YouTube from Google. Uh, mm -hmm. Google Maps specifically went down to the Galapagos to map, do the, you know, if you imagine the car with the picture above it, they have the suits where people wear instead where it has the picture. So you actually can take a walking tour around the Galapagos. They were in the volcanoes, along the beaches. They even had some submersible uh, paths where they were following uh, seals. Tons of great information. We'll have those links down below, both the YouTube videos, and they also have a dedicated page just to all the Galapagos work that they did. Really enjoyable, top tier, top notch, you know, enrichment and activities. Mm -hmm. um, definitely something you should definitely yeah. check out. It was, a, it was a ton of fun. So that's it. We've, but, we've done the South America thing. Yeah, we're moving on. To where? Should we do it? I'm Rick, I'm Rick Steves, Steves, and this, this is, is the best, best of Europe. Europe. So. <laughs> We're such Rick Steves nerds because he lives in Seattle, too. He lives in Seattle. So, I don't know, kindred spirit, but before yeah. we traveled to Europe, we watched a lot of Rick Steves videos, yeah. so we're pretty excited yeah, to head, off, yeah. head to Europe with so our daughters. So we're going to start in, in the Baltics um, and the Nordic countries. That's yeah, kind of where we're Northern gonna Europe is so where we're going to start. We're doing the overview now, so maybe in a couple of weeks we're going to come out with the next video, so yeah. we'll be in Europe. It was a great trip through South America. It we learned a, a ton. It was we a great ate, trip. We ate such good food. We ate so well. <laughs> so South America was a wonderful trip. We thank you for sharing your culture with us. It was, a, it was a great trip. I learned a lot. My kids learned a lot. It was a lot of fun. But we are very excited to head over to Europe. Different change of, of venue, different change of area. Well, it's, uh, area. it's nice because the cultural shifts are going to be so great, right? Be very studying dramatic, like yeah. Norway, Sweden, and then going over and studying Ireland is going to be just such a change. And then, oh, mm -hmm. and now we're in Germany, and now we're in France. I mean, it's yeah. really, I think it's going to feel um, wholly different where a yeah. lot of South America felt like similar culturally. Yeah. And, you know, at least for us and our, our brief study of it felt yeah. similar. And so I think this is going to be really fun. Thank Absolutely. you all for coming on this journey with us and watching these videos and stick with us as we head to Europe. Europe. <laughs>